Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Guillaume de Zotte. I am head of vehicle performance here in Scuderia Alfa Tauri. So I'm leading a, a group of engineers uh, focused on, on the car performance, and I will be answering your technical questions uh, this afternoon. I will tell you a little bit about myself and about the, the group I lead before I, I start to answer the questions. So we are a group of engineers. Our mission is to optimize the race cars uh, during the racing, every race, uh, during the season where we develop uh, our cars and also looking forward to the next, next season and next uh, set of regulations or next championship. Uh, our group is composed of uh, different areas. So we have a vehicle dynamics experts looking after suspension, power unit, brake system, simulation. Uh, then we have a group of uh, tire engineers that are looking after the optimization of the tires, which is a big topic in Formula One. Uh, we have a strategy group, uh, so looking after simulation of different race strategy, looking at competitor analysis, trying to understand where are the strengths and weaknesses of our package. Uh, we have a simulation and software group who is developing simulation tools, analysis tools, and uh, software uh, that we, we use uh, uh, for our activities. And, and obviously, one very important group, uh, part of vehicle performance is uh, race engineering, which is composed of the race engineers that are traveling with the cars and the drivers, and that actually uh, manage the cars when they are running and uh, optimize the, the setup of the cars with, with the drivers. Um, here I am in our operation room uh, in Faenza. It's our remote facility where we operate uh, when the cars are running on track. Uh, so uh, we all sit there, we have a uh, live telemetry uh, where we can see what's going on. Uh, we have all our analysis, like you, you can see uh, the TV broadcast, weather, GPS. We have a lot of uh, data coming from, uh, from the racetrack uh, live. And uh, we are also able to discuss with our um, colleagues from the racetrack through this uh, intercom system. So um, on some cases, there is a one-to-one -one communication with uh, uh, one of the engineers of the vehicle performance group at the track. On other uh, scenarios, we can listen to uh, drivers, engineers, Honda uh, colleagues. So uh, with the target of supporting them uh, uh, during the winter test and, and during the races. So that's, that's it for a small presentation. Let's go through your questions. So uh, what is your opinion on the new F1 calendar? Uh, but first of all, we are very happy to have a, a calendar. Uh, I think there's been a, a big challenge, uh, like for all other sports, on uh, trying to be able to put together um, a safe uh, environment for, for racing. I think Formula One is probably one of the best fields to uh, achieve that. Uh, so um, everything looks, uh, looks green to start racing in, uh, in Austria. Uh, we are very happy to start uh, to start the season in a Red Bull ring, uh, that's going to be a, a great, great event. Obviously, we, we're going to be missing our fans uh, in the grandstand, but I think a lot of people will be following that on, on TV. So we are pretty happy with the calendar. Uh, we are looking forward to the second part of the season because only the first races have been confirmed, but we are confident we will be able to operate in a, in a safe way for, for the show to, uh, to go on. So... The next question, how long you work as a head of vehicle performance? Uh, it's been two and a half years. Uh, I'm, I'm leading this, uh, this group of engineers. Uh, previously, I was um, chief engineer for vehicle performance. So I was still working with, uh, with, with this group and, and on those activities. Uh, so yeah, two and a half years has been a uh, uh, pretty short, short time in the end, but uh, very intense and we're looking forward for the season to, to restart. So given what, uh, what's happened, how has the development program of this year, uh, 8001, changed? So obviously we were ready to, to race in Australia uh, at the beginning of March. Um, everything I had to stop. We obviously we, ha we had to, to also stop all our technical activities uh, because all the Formula World teams uh, decided to set up a a factory shutdown like we usually do in the in the summer in august so uh, we we didn't do much uh, in the end in terms of uh, the development program um, 
Obviously, now uh, we, we came back to the office on, on Monday. Our development plan uh, is restarting. We will try to get our, uh, our next developments to the car as soon as, as possible. But we actually just restarted a couple of days ago. Uh, how do you get a job in F1 from a university? Uh, so um, I think there are many opportunities. Um, we have a, a very, uh, very successful and, and uh, strong program with our uh, partner Runstat to uh, bring uh, student interns into uh, into our team uh, every year. So uh, actually, I think uh, there are opportunities. Obviously, uh, with the background coming from, I am mechanical engineer, but different uh, fields are obviously of interest for Formula One. There are uh, data scientists, uh, aerospace engineers. So there are many, many possibilities to get into uh, uh, F1. Um, then, for sure, uh, experiences in um, Formula Student uh, or on the lower categories are actually very positive for us because we find uh, people that actually have a, a good understanding of uh, racing activities. So um, let's say that I think there are many options. Uh, one should try to uh, obviously be very motivated, work hard, uh, and, and try to approach the teams. If it's not in F1, that can start in lower categories, and I think there's plenty to learn uh, before to get to uh, Formula 1. So based on pre-season test, do you think you have a chance to be problematic for the top teams during the season? So uh, obviously the, the set of data we have from winter test um, is, is good, but it, it's not 100% uh, uh, clear who is in front or who is, who is at the back, because there is a strong influence of what were the fuel loads people were running in, in winter test to uh, actually evaluate uh, the, the performance. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you have uh, you, you have that in mind. But uh, every 10 kilo heavier uh, we, we put on the car, every 10 kilo of mass, the car is slowing down nearly four tenths uh, per lap. So that's that's a big performance differentiator for for the cars. So if in the winter test some cars are running a bit heavier to hide their performance, there there could be some surprises. And and, and the same in the other way. If some people were running pretty light. In the in the winter test, then maybe the, the performance is not as good as as we expect. So from from this year winter test, we do expect uh, the three top teams to be still at the front by uh, a certain amount. Uh, usually they are like one percent faster than the rest of of the midfield. Uh, last year we had the extremely tight midfield uh, with nearly 10, 12 cars in a, in a small amount of lap time like within half a percent uh, so we do expect to fight in this midfield um, hopefully we will be at the front of this midfield uh, that's where it's so tight that it's difficult to evaluate but for the top teams we still expect them to be ahead will reliability be affected by the time the factories have been shut down um, hopefully not uh, that's not directly my uh, area of responsibility, but uh, obviously it's very, very important in, in Formula One to have reliable cars, obviously not, not to finish the race or to complete the qualifying, but also for being able to complete free practice session in a smooth way and don't waste time uh, fixing, fixing the car, but really focus on, on the performance. So it's a very, very important aspect. I don't expect uh, there will be any, uh, any downside due to the, the, the downtime we had during the, the shutdown. Obviously, now the mechanics are uh, checking the cars that, that came back from Australia after so, some time. Uh, we will check the driver fit, that everything is perfect. So there will be a lot of work in preparation for this first race at the beginning of July to make sure that the cars are reliable uh, and, and ready to race. Uh, as head of vehicle performance, how do you deal with problems during races in order to send solve them in real time. So uh, we try, so obviously we are a lot of people, so uh, so we have a, a several experts in the various uh, fields of the car. So when the cars are running, we have a suspension expert, we have a power unit expert, we have a brakes expert, we have a tire expert. So all these guys uh, or ladies are looking at, at it in a really detailed way and reporting everything that is not uh, 
uh, normal or everything that is outstanding or that really needs needs some uh, some more analysis or more thoughts uh, if it's critical and there is a possible corrective action to to take from from the race team then that's something we would communicate live uh, through whoever is leading um, the, this uh, remote facility this operation room during during the racing whether it's myself or uh, my colleague Claudio, the, the chief engineer uh, of AP Performance. Um, so we would communicate live to the chief race engineer on the track. Uh, otherwise, we will uh, live produce documentation, so technical reports with more details uh, to try to help the race team solve, uh, solve the issue. So sometimes this is something we have to do immediately. Sometimes this is something we can do when the car is back. Sometimes this is something that can stop the car running. Uh, so we, for safety safety concern or uh, for reliability to avoid making a bigger damage, we call the car in so that that can happen. So generally, uh, the way we deal with it is that we start looking at the data in a great level of detail. We rely on the experts to fit us uh, in and then we communicate to the racetrack. Pitwall and operation room, how is the workload split between uh, these two over race weekend uh, that's, that's a good question they are very different environments so um, the operation room is is a quiet is a quiet place a uh, very calm uh, where you have a lot of data like, like a pit wall and you have access to all, all all the information that are available at the pit wall and um, so it's a little bit easier uh, to uh, step back and try to build a picture of what's going on, which sometimes, especially in, 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 during the race, can be a, a bit of a challenge to understand what's going on, what is the, the best thing to do at the time. Uh, the racetrack is, is a bit more complicated because obviously you have a, it's very busy. You have the cars uh, passing in the pit lane. Uh, there is a lot of adre adrenaline because you are really in the first in line. Um, so generally, the live decision. The final decision will be taken by the racetrack, uh, by the pit wall, and the operation room would act as a, like a bit of a safety net or also the group of people preparing the various suggestions, the various options. Also in the strategy, it's very important. We have a race strategist at the racetrack uh, taking the final decision on our strategy with the chief race engineer. But we have race strategists at the factory that are following the entire race, looking at what our software uh, advises to, to do at the time. And so generally, they would feed the pit wall with some information, some, some content, and then the pit wall would make uh, the, the final call. So different environments uh, and different different work, workload, pit wall on, on the live, on what's going on next two seconds, and operation room a, li a little bit more on the, on the longer time scale. What was your career path like before F1? Um, so I'm a mechanical engineer, uh, graduated in, uh, in, in uh, engineering school in, in Paris. Um, I started to work in a, in a Formula 3 team based in uh, Manicourt in France uh, called Sony Racing. Uh, then uh, I was involved also in the Formula Super Nissan Championship, which was kind of like Formula 2 Championship uh, as a race engineer. Uh, so straight uh, in, in the motorsport uh, industry. Uh, and then I had the, the chance to join uh, Scuderia Toro Rosso in 2006 as a control system engineer uh, in, the, um, in the race team. So I actually joined the Formula One team in 2006, so uh, a long time ago. Uh, and, and my career out of Formula One has been, has been very short. Uh, it was mainly focused on uh, Formula One. How do you understand where and how to improve a determined part of the car? Uh, so that's that's a very uh, very interesting question because uh, obviously we are not here to say that uh, we would need more power from the engine, more grip from the tires, or more downforce from our uh, colleagues from the aerodynamics department. Uh, that that's obvious. We we know that, and we know that that would make the car the car faster. Uh, so. Um, our, our responsibility is uh, to um, 
analyze with, with our tools, with the telemetry, and also looking at what the competitors do, what are the competitors' strengths and weaknesses, try to understand where we should improve and where the, the, the value for money is, is, the, is the best. So, uh, for example, uh, it, it, that's not straightforward, obviously, in Formula One, in a very tight midfield, it's very easy to make the car better in a phase where it doesn't bring a lot and where our competitiveness is already pretty good. So all our development program is really focused on where we think there is the best opportunity for making the car faster compared to our uh, direct competitors. So uh, I can make an example. Uh, for example, we can, we can see that typically our competitiveness is not great in a certain phase of a certain type of corner. So, for example, in the low speed corner, tight air pin, we can see that in a, in certain phase of the corner or in braking or in, in, in corner entry or in, at the apex, our competitiveness in this condition is, is not great. Then try to analyze, obviously, taking the, 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 the input from the driver, try to analyze the reasons for not being able to be more competitive in, in that phase. And from there, try to see if it's what, what we need to do to try to, to make the car better in that phase. So we are really in a great level of detail. And that's why we need a vehicle performance group uh, in a Formula One team is because it's not good enough uh, just to try to bring more downforce or to get more horsepower from, from the engine. That, that's not good enough. Everybody is running on the same tires. So there is a great effort in trying to optimize the use of the tires. So. Uh, so we are really on the detail and our group is there to drive uh, the, the development and, and the areas we should we should improve over over the season and in different conditions. How will the dynamics of the car affect uh, how will the dynamics of the car affect when the new tires with the small sidewall is introduced? Uh, so um, we are looking at that. That's still a long way uh, ahead fr fr from now. The, the new tires should uh, should come in um, in 2022. Uh, actually, the 18 inches, so that's 18 inches tires, and currently we are using 13 inches tires. Uh, actually, uh, the, the, there will be some impact on obviously the way the tire works in terms of uh, the stiffnesses, the contact patch, uh, also the shape of the tire that has a, a big influence on the aerodynamics of, of the car so there will be obviously a big impact of, of the new tire but the tire we're gonna go for is not is not exactly like a low profile tire you can you can see on the road car that that remains a, a tire that still has a quite high sidewall uh, compared to uh, okay smaller than, than the 13 inches but, but still quite big and um and uh, in terms of this characteristic, it's not that far from, uh, fr from the current product we're using. So for sure, we will do a new car, but that's what we do every year. We will analyze everything, but that's still a long way uh, to go. So uh, for now, our focus is really on the, on the season that is uh, it's yet to start. Okay, let's question in Italian. Visto che sarà un campionato anomalo, lo sviluppo della vettura Sarà programmato anche per l'anno prossimo. Okay, so uh, considering that this championship is not is not normal, if, if the development of the car uh, we, is also programmed for for next year, so uh, the teams have uh, agreed on um, the homologation of a number of components of the current car into 2021 uh, as a cost saving measure. So uh, for sure. Uh, the car, the current car, will be developed uh, a lot uh, into 2021, um, and apart from the homologated components. So uh, currently, uh, our 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 task is to understand, obviously, what will be homologated, and what where are the best opportunities in terms of car development uh, once some of the components are homologated. Uh, for example, the the chassis of the car will be homologated at race one of this year uh, into 2021. So from this year onwards, we will not be able to change the chassis unless we use some tokens. And there is a token system that will 
be uh, put in place. So uh, that's something we are looking at, and our responsibility is really the one to to try to understand what are the best opportunities to submit that to our uh, technical director, to our uh, aero department, and our uh, design uh, design office to see how we should use our tokens, how we should develop this car to get uh, the most out of it. How do you think the budget cuts agreed for the next season will affect the vehicle performance? Uh, so uh, I hope it's not going to affect the vehicle performance too much. But uh, generally, um, the budget cap that has, has been signed for a, a team like us to our size is, is obviously a, a still a good budget. Uh, and, and the requirement for having a group of engineers managing the cars when they are running, optimizing the car from race to race uh, remains, remains valid. So uh, obviously, I hope that we will be able to uh, keep operating at least to the level we are uh, now. But let's say that I'm not, I'm not expecting uh, big, big cuts in this area. Uh, there are very complicated cars, uh, and, uh, and it, it's, it's important that we are, uh, we are able to maintain a great level of engineering for, uh, for optimizing those cars, especially in the context of a tight midfield. So uh, the, de the differences with our competitors are, are small. We are in a, in, a, in a very tight fight with our competitors. So uh, uh, the small mistake is, is paid a big price. So it's, it's, it's important that we are, we are able to maintain a, a great level of engineering when the cars are running. Uh, in percentage terms, how much can the work of the vehicle performance group improve the performance of the cars? Uh, I think I hope it's a it's a it's a good uh, it's a big percentage. Uh, let's say that uh, those cars uh, are, are quite complicated, uh, and we are in a really as I said uh, before, we are really in a high level of detail on uh, everything we optimize around the car. So when we look at the power unit with our uh, partners from Honda, we look at the energy deployment and uh, the way we use the energy around the lap and we really optimize to the, to the last bit of energy available. Same for the tires, when the, you see the cars going out in qualifying session, uh, we, uh, all, all the tire sets are at the exact temperature, we run simulations, we really to, to make sure that our tires will be in the best possible condition around, around the qualifying lap. Uh, during the race, there is a lot of management uh, we do with the engineers and the drivers to optimize the package. A Formula One car is not a car you can, uh, uh, you can push to the maximum at all times. You need to save a bit the energy, save a bit the fuel, save a bit the tires in certain phase of, of, the, of, the, of the race. So if you don't do that, uh, I think, I think you, you lose a lot, especially in the race. Uh, you can have a very fast car, you can have a good qualifying session, but then if you are not up to the, the task for, for the race in terms of optimizing live what's going on, I think you can have a lot more tire degradation, uh, then you, your optimization of the fuel quantities is less optimal, so you, maybe you carry a bit more fuel. We do a lot of work to uh, define the, the, the race fuel quantity, so how how much fuel we put on, on the car before the race uh, to make sure we are not carrying extra mass for nothing because this is a big performance differentiator. So in the race, I think that uh, in, in percentage, I think a big part of the performance, I'm not going to put a figure here, but uh, I, th I think it's a, big, it's a big number. And I think without these resources, you, you will struggle to, to make good race. What do you think about your lineup for this year? How is working with, the, with them? So uh, I think we have a very good lineup. Uh, we, are, we are very happy. Uh, the end of uh, last year has been a, big example, uh, a good example of uh, how good is our, our lineup. Uh, also, what is very positive is that uh, Daniel and Pierre are really uh, challenging each other. And that's, uh, that's pulling the, the, the team forward. We have a good relationship. Um, obviously, there is a lot of competition uh, between between them. Like there is always 
between uh, between two teammates. But uh, we have a good uh, good collaboration. Uh, they have they keep their race engineers from from last year. They had good relate. They have a good relationship with the race and performance engineers. So the engineers from vehicle performance that they see uh, at the track every race. Uh, we do simulator sessions with, with them. So I think I think we we have a we have a good. Uh, we have a good uh, pair of, of drivers for, for this year, and, and that's a, definitely a strength um, in our position fighting in the midfield, because if we are able to have uh, the two cars uh, there in the midfield, close to points or in the points, that's what makes a huge difference when you are uh, comp competing in the, in the midfield. How was the atmosphere in the room uh, where you when Pierre second place in Brazil uh, last year? Uh, so uh, actually, I was not in the room. Unfortunately, <laughs> that was one of the few races I, uh, I was not. I was not here. Uh, so uh, I think it was quite uh, quite intense. Uh, obviously, the, the, the race finished, but I think all, all race long it was a uh, it was really intense for for the guys uh, in here and, and at the track. Obviously, uh, you know, I was I was uh, I was looking at the. At the at, at the race on TV, and, and when I call when I call the guys, I could just hear everybody shouting, and I realized that was real. Uh, so that was really impressive, uh, fantastic result for the team. Uh, since the start of the race, we showed a strong pace. So uh, I think obviously there was many race incidents. There were many race incidents, and 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 we got we got the result. But but we showed a strong pace. We were ahead of the midfield for the first two stints of the race uh, and, and the last uh, the last trade going uphill with the with the Honda engine fighting the Mercedes engine uh, and holding to, to the start finish line was was really a great uh, a great one for us but also for our uh, partner Honda uh, with the limited races this season will the team take more risks and more changes the chances in order to to push for podium higher finishes it's not uh, it's not an easy one to to answer because um, you always need to find uh, the, the the right balance between uh, how, how much risk you want to take and that's that's true for for the drivers and and but also for for the engineers uh, when you are setting up the car you need to find the best compromise between uh, how uh, how good you want to make the car for qualifying but how it will impact the tire degradation in the race uh, then we are always trying to, to find the best compromise. But that's what is a very difficult in our job is that there is never um, a clear answer. Uh, and it's always about a compromise. And there is always a bit of a intense discussion between us and the race drive because we can have different views and 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 also we will will have different targets. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a challenge. I think that having two races in, a, in the same location uh, for sure will develop a bit uh, the race events in a different way because uh, if, you, if you see that usually when we, we start running on the racetrack on, on a Friday, uh, the beginning of the race weekend, we have a rather conservative approach in terms of what we test, checking that the car is behaving as expected, that the tires and the power unit are the right temperatures. So there are a lot of like sanity check of, of what's, what's going on to make sure that we, we can have a reliable car for, for the weekend. Uh, when you race again the next weekend on the same location, probably you are up to speed immediately. Uh, you can test maybe bigger uh, setup items. Uh, so I think, I think this championship will, uh, will, will call for, for a bit, maybe a bit more risk. But again, the, the, the constructor championship is, uh, is, a, is a big challenge. That's our target, and, and that's what we, we need to do. Uh, and, and that takes many races. Uh, how has the role of uh, performance engineer changed over the last decade? That's, that has changed uh, quite a bit. Uh, obviously, uh, especially since we introduced the hybrid power unit in 2014, uh, the, car, the cars got a lot more complicated. So the performance engineer uh, maybe before in, in the previous era uh, was a bit more on its own. There was no operation room uh, 10 years ago here. There was no operation room. So the racetrack 
uh, we were on our on our own uh, and now when you are the track as a performance engineer you are really like trying to coordinate all the various inputs you get from the all the experts uh, back at the factory so i think yeah that has changed quite a lot uh, we came from a, a role where you were on your own with the race engineer and the driver trying to optimize a bit of everything and now you're really like receiving inputs from a lot of people and trying to uh, uh, to, to extract uh, every uh, every interesting bit and convert that into some uh, car uh, setup change or uh, or uh, driver setting or whatever how do you find living in italy uh, it's a good place to be uh, i i really enjoy uh, being in italy uh, we arrived with my wife in 2006, so a long time ago. Uh, my kids uh, were born in Italy. Uh, they, they speak a brilliant Italian, a lot better than mine. So uh, we we really enjoy being uh, being in Italy. Uh, it's it's a nice place. Fiesta is a nice area. We have uh, uh, mountains. We have the seaside. So yeah, it's pretty pretty cool. Great. Who makes up the group you work with? So, um, if I understand well, is uh, okay. Who is hiring the people? Who is choosing the people I, I work with? Uh, so, uh, I, I am uh, obviously involved in the recruiting process, uh, not alone, because obviously uh, in vehicle performance there are other group leaders that are following specific activities. Uh, obviously, we have a uh, human uh, human resource department technical director is involved so uh, there are a lot of people involved in the uh, recruiting uh, generally yeah i i um, i make the decision on uh, who are uh, my uh, collaborators and uh, yeah i think it's uh, like any any other business how have you spent the lockdown um i stayed at home like uh, most of you i guess uh, I did a lot of things I never did over the years, so uh, I, I found myself actually uh, pretty busy. Uh, but I was very happy to come back to work because it's been uh, it's been long. I think the first month was really uh, time was flying. I was too much. I had too much to do. Uh, the second month started to uh, be a bit uh, a bit long, and uh, and I was looking forward to come back to to work, and especially when we started to hear that. We would be back uh, racing in uh, in Austria. Then we are happy to uh, to restart. Name your favorite book, film, and uh, TV series. Uh, and not uh, not an easy one. Uh, yeah, for my mom, for the favorite book, I would have said uh, Victor Hugo in Miserable. <laughs> That's going to sound strange. So uh, my favorite book. I'm, I'm reading a book on the NASA uh, mission control uh, management. Which is just just great because it's a very similar activity of uh, of, uh, of the one you, you you can see here. But they, they spend spacecraft, they send spacecraft in, in the in the sky. Uh, we run Formula One cars, so that's that's great to see uh, on how great level of detail uh, they are because they do that since uh, many many years, and we started uh, six seven years ago. So that that's a nice a nice uh, book. Uh, from a, a flight director from NASA. Uh, my favorite film, I think, is uh, I don't know, maybe Rush. Rush, Rush is a good one. And uh, TV series, uh, I don't look at TV series a lot. Uh, I discovered uh, Drive to Survive from from Netflix that I actually didn't see. A lot of people told me about it, and uh, during this shutdown, uh, I took the opportunity to. To, to see it and uh, you just enjoyed it it was so much fun so much fun uh, so uh, yeah I, I would put that TV series because I didn't see uh, I didn't see many and uh, it was it was good good one good so uh, thank you very much for your for your questions uh, I hope you you enjoyed uh, your time with uh, with us in uh, in Alpha Tauri and uh, I hope you're gonna switch on your TV on the 5th of August uh, or July, sorry, when we, we go racing in, in Austria. Uh, hopefully we're gonna, we're gonna have a good season start. Thank you very much. See you next time.